The darkness is coming to light, and with it, a lot of mucked up ish has assaulted our collective eye. Just about every aspect of life has been politicized, people have chosen their teams to fight alongside, and the world is having an all-out screaming match with itself. Seems pretty terrible, doesn't it? Well, what if I told you this is exactly what we needed? It's the end of the world as we know it. And I feel fine. Welcome to the Red Room, where we consider more and sometimes rant. The delusions of the old world are tumbling down like a house of cards, row by row, layer by layer. It's an ugly and scary thing to watch in real time, unable to stop it. But to that I ask, why would we want to? To lay back down, go back into blissful sleep? If the world is to thrive and not just survive, I think it calls for people who are awake to the lies and contrivances baked into the foundations of modern society. The confusion around certain topics have only seemed to grow in recent years, and people seem more divided than ever in these United States, not to speak of everything else going on in the world. How strong are our foundations when free speech has been portrayed as a dangerous tool for violence? Maybe they weren't all that strong to begin with. Maybe we're working with old and rusted material. And maybe the way we're going about things isn't how we're going to solve the problems of yesteryear. This applies to democratic nations all over the globe. Everyone says the world has changed, and it has, but not just because of the thing that happened last year, you know the one. No, this change came most notably after the 11th day of the ninth month, 20 years ago. The tragedy of that day still echoes into the present, and since then, the goalpost has been shifting all over the world. Have you noticed it? What's right and not right? What's healthy and not healthy? What's constitutional and not constitutional? The rules have sneakily changed, and people who just want to live their lives have been caught in the middle of it, used as playing pieces in political, identity, and racial wars. You have to pick our team. You have to stand with us. You have to pick up your pitchforks. But no, you don't. We don't. If we play the parts we've been assigned, things will only get worse. But if we dare to see things for what they are, then we can start to move in the direction of real peace, real unity, and real understanding. And this, this epoch of disillusion, this is our big opportunity. The fraudulence of media is more apparent than ever. Celebrity worship is on the decline. Cancel culture is being seen for the hypocritical mess it truly is. Hashtag I stand with Dave. Civil unrest is not being televised. It's chaotic. It's panic inducing. And it's great. No, I'm not a masochist, but it's truly great that we get to see this in real time. We have to face the problems in order to come up with the solutions. Like I said, the old world is crumbling. And as we swing from one side of the pendulum to the other, from one extreme to the next, we as a collective have tasted the fruits of our engagements. And they're not really delicious. We're slowly beginning to realize that this two sides game ain't really it. That this worldwide ping pong battle is finally losing its luster. The world is upside down, and arguably it always has been. And yes, at first this can be disheartening. It can be depressing. It can make you very, very pissed off. This is heaven. Yeah. Well done, everyone. You we got to Elysium. Look at fucking hellscape this is. We seem to know all of the problems in the world and none of the solutions. So then what? What does one do? Well, one of the first steps is to ride that initial wave. The state of the world is complicated, to say the absolute least. That beautiful illusion we all once gazed into inadvertently, naively, has decayed to such a point where it seems like we've walked into the twilight zone. It can drive anyone crazy, but it helps to have a dialogue. It helps to let others know that they're not alone, that you see what they see, and that together we can dismantle the decrepit and build anew. There's power in numbers, and as a collective, we have big numbers. Bigger numbers than any antiquated systems can compete with. It's been the belief that one person can't make a difference, that somehow having hope for the future is inherently wide-eyed and naive, and that we've reached the plateau as a people. The pressures of life have left many people jaded and hurt and afraid to speak out or stand with the people who do. As a result, things have been carried from one extreme to the next, from one battle to the next. It's been this way for millennia. The only difference now is that there isn't necessarily the threat of death. These days, our battles are emotional, mental, spiritual. It's why certain subliminal messages are implanted in the mind at a young age. Consumption has been our assigned purpose, and we've all played the part well. Everyone's looking for that connection, for that road to happiness. And we've all been told that happiness can be found in the right outer thing. 
and a thing that glitters just right. These days, we're blessed to have all these outer things, and yet the world continues its seeming plummet into chaos. Division is on the rise, and people understand each other less and less as lines are deliberately blurred. Where's the happiness? Not where we've been looking. It's not in the news or the reports or the mainstream narratives that are being churned out. It's not in this argument or that argument or in this way of life or in that way of life. It's not in a certain religion or creed or occupation, but we all keep looking in those places. Everyone wants to believe that they're on the right side of history. It's only natural. It feels good to know we've made the right decisions or took the right opportunities because we've been taught that we are these decisions. We are the things we own and we are the faces we wear, the pigment we bear, the roles we play. It's programming that's hard to undo. And that's why we have to keep reminding ourselves that we're not these things. We live in a time that's so deeply entrenched in dividing people by traits or identities or categories, and we need to recognize that ultimately we're all the same. We may not all have the same problems or come from the same backgrounds, but we all have the same ability to empathize with and help one another in some way, shape, or form. The idea that we're so fundamentally alien from each other due to superficial differences is really just a step too far. Ironically, those claiming to be for acceptance and unity create the opposite when they insist on placing individuals in boxes and segregating them from the perceived majority. The truth is, it really isn't that complicated. Every facet of a person doesn't have to be defined. You don't have to claim the gang to be considered worthy or part of something. You're already part of something, the human race. Sounds flowery, I know, but it's true. More and more people are growing fatigued playing the race card or the gender card or the this card or the that card. We all breathe air, we all bleed, we were all born and we'll all die. The hatred and vitriol with which these things are done are so apparent, which only creates more pushback against the things certain people supposedly stand for. We're living in a time of confusion and blurred lines. So far, these blurred lines haven't done much to help us. But what if they could? What if people became so aware of these blurred lines that they rally to put them into focus? What if enough people collectively defined the values that were important and left the rest up to the individual? Could you imagine a world where we were allowed to disagree but still treat each other civilly? We're never going to live in a world where everybody has a one-to-one -one perspective on every little thing. And that should be celebrated. Otherwise, we'd be the human hive mind instead of the human race. I truly feel that the issues cropping up today are our biggest opportunity to set things right. These are things that no one can ignore now. It's all on our screens, in our ears, on our lips. Maybe those who didn't see it before do now. Maybe they can help us set things right. The time of revelations is now. Just when you think things couldn't get any crazier, another story pops up. And we could either lose ourselves in despair, as is the intended effect, or we could collaborate to the best of our ability and make the world a little bit better on a scale we each can manage. We've been falsely taught that only grand actions can make a difference. But something so simple as being kind can ripple out into many people's lives. Most people aren't apathetic or violent or narcissistic. Most people aren't advocating or pushing for the same things the media machine does. But it benefits the narrative that we believe this and think we're powerless to do anything, to change things. Something something, the sharpest tool in the devil's toolbox. In other words, perpetuate goodness. It matters. In closing, it can be argued that all three of the following statements are true. The world is burning and it's time to do something about it. The world is burning and it's an illusion. The world is burning and it's a good thing. If you made it this far, thank you. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel so inclined. I'd really appreciate it. Stay safe, stay curious, and happy holidays. See you soon. Thank you.